Good morning. We will give everyone just a couple of minutes to join us and then we'll get started at about two minutes after 11 today, just to ensure folks can see the slides and can hear today's webinar. Thank you for joining us for the Artist Catalyst Grant webinar. My name is Veronica O'Hearn and I am the Senior Grant and Operations Manager at the Iowa Arts Council. We also have Program and Operations Coordinator Sarah Florian on the webinar today. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Closed captioning is available for the presentation. You may enable it now by clicking the closed captioning CC button at the bottom of your screen. All lines are muted and will be for the duration of the presentation to reduce background noise as the webinar is being recorded. A link to the recording of the webinar will be emailed to all registrants and posted on our website at iowaculture.gov backslash arts. There you can also find the program information and resources mentioned in this webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom. You may also use this feature if you are experiencing any technical difficulties. Staff will assist with Q&A throughout the presentation. However, we will also take time at the end to answer any questions. Here's a look at the agenda for the webinar. The purpose of this presentation is to familiarize you with the Iowa Arts Council and our role in administering grants that are supported by state and federal government, provide an overview of the grant program goals and eligibility, walk through the application requirements, and show you how to successfully submit a proposal using the online system. So we'll begin with an overview of the Iowa Arts Council. The Iowa Arts Council is your state arts agency, meaning we are an entity within state government. We are a division of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs. The mission of the department is to empower Iowa to build and sustain culturally vibrant communities by connecting Iowans to the people, places, and points of pride that define our state. The department is made up of three divisions, the State Historical Society of Iowa, the Iowa Arts Council, and Produce Iowa, the State Office of Film and Media Production. The Iowa Arts Council is the arts arm of the department, and our mission is to cultivate creativity, participation, and learning in the arts. We administer funding, networking, and learning opportunities that support arts and culture across Iowa. Funding for our work in this program comes from the federal government through the National Endowment for the Arts, and from the state government through annual appropriations from the Iowa legislature to the Iowa Arts Council. So the takeaway here is that the Iowa Arts Council's work, including the Artist Catalyst Grant, is funded with taxpayer dollars. So the public value of what we do in is, is an essential component of our programs and especially our grant programs. Today, we're going to discuss the Artist Catalyst Grant, but we also want you to be aware of other grant programs that are available for Iowa artists this year. Please note that Iowa artists may only receive one grant per year, so you will need to pick which program is the best fit for you, as you can only apply for one. These grants all fund activity taking place within the upcoming fiscal year of July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. The Artist Catalyst Grant and School Arts Experience Grant will have quarterly deadlines in May, August, November, and February, while the others have our regular annual deadline. Art Project Grants provide uh, 
$2,500 to $10,000 with a 50% cash match requirement for large projects that create and present new work and involve collaboration and have public access. Greenlight grants provide between $10,000 and $50,000 with a 50% cash match requirement for Iowa filmmakers for film or media production projects that take place in Iowa. And all of those grant funds have to be spent on Iowa vendors. Artist fellowships provide $10,000 and a year's worth of professional development to Iowa artists who are at a pivotal moment in their artistic careers. And school arts experience grants provide between $500 and $2,500 with a 50% cash match requirement for teaching artists to present fine arts activities, performances, and educational content to Iowa K-12 students. Here's a quick look at the full list of fiscal year 2023 grants. Here you can see which grants are available by applicant type, um, which includes artists, schools, nonprofits, and communities. So if you are collaborating with a nonprofit on a performance or working with a small town on a mural, there are grant programs available that they can apply for to support your fees as well. In particular, I'd like to point out the Creative Places Project Grant, which asks communities to work with local artists on projects that enhance the community through arts and culture. So just be aware of these and know that they can help your collaborators support your fees as well. The past few years have brought to the forefront historic inequities and in arts funding faced by many individuals, organizations, and communities. Therefore, the Iowa Arts Council will focus on equity and inclusion across all of its programs and will place additional consideration on applications from individuals and cultural organizations that represent populations that have historically been under-resourced by arts and cultural funding due to rural geography, race and ethnicity, or socioeconomic status. Definitions and criteria for meeting these priorities can be found in our grant terms and definitions on the website at iowaculture.gov. However, applications from all eligible applicants are encouraged regardless of whether or not they meet this criteria. Let's start with a look at the application timeline for the Artist Catalyst Grant. This will give you an idea of what to expect in terms of turnaround and communication for the program after application. And please note that all referenced communication is sent via email, so it is important to provide current contact information and all material. This program will have quarterly application deadlines this year with deadlines on May 2nd, August 1st, November 1, and February 1. Once applications are submitted, they undergo a review by staff for eligibility and eligible applications will be sent on to a staff panel review. The panel will submit funding recommendations to the director of the department and administrator of the Iowa Arts Council. They will consider the panel recommendation and department funding priorities to make decisions. All applicants will be notified of funding decisions either way by June 30th for the upcoming May deadline or within four weeks of application for the remaining deadlines this year. Funding decisions are final and may not be appealed due to dissatisfaction. Those who do receive funding will receive a contract and more information on how to manage the award at that time. Grant recipients will be able to expend funds on approved expenses incurred beginning the first day of the month following the application deadline through the end of the fiscal year. This is also the time period in which they have to complete their grant activity. So the later you apply in the year, the shorter amount of time you will have to complete your grant activity. And all grant recipients will have to complete a final report by August 1st of 2023 to close out their grant award. As with any grant program, it is important to determine whether the program is the right fit for you. To do so, make sure you've reviewed all available material before applying. And please note that the Iowa Arts Council's grant process is entirely paperless. All grant program materials are available online and all communication will be sent via email. We do have an accessibility coordinator on staff for anyone who needs assistance with the application process. 
The first step in applying is to go to the Iowa Arts Council's website at iowaculture.gov backslash arts and click on the grants tab. Here you will find a list of all Iowa Arts Council administered grant programs, including those that I referenced earlier. You'll want to find the program you're interested in and download the guidelines for that specific program. Each Iowa Arts Council administered program has a different set of requirements and guidelines that applicants must follow. So please make sure you closely read and understand these. The guidelines also include a scoring rubric so you can see how an application will be evaluated. And you will need to read the Iowa Arts Council's funding policies which cover the rules and requirements for our grant programs as a whole. Step three is to visit the Iowa Arts Council's application portal at iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com. Here you'll be able to view a summary of application requirements by clicking on the link to the program that you wish to apply for. To view the full application requirements, you will need to create an account on Slideroom and log in. It is free, it just requires an email address. After logging in, you will have access to the full narrative questions, the character limits and upload requirements. All material must be submitted online via Slideroom. The Iowa Arts Council does not accept any material submitted via mail or email, nor does it accept material submitted after a deadline passes. And the final step once you've re reviewed all available material is to contact Iowa Arts Council staff or attend one of our virtual office hours to ask any remaining questions. Office hours are open Zoom meetings where applicants can drop in at any time within the hour to ask questions about applying for a grant. The schedule for those meetings is available on our website and we have specific dates for each grant program and we will also share those dates at the conclusion of today's presentation. So now we'll take a look at the goals and general eligibility requirements for the Artist Catalyst grant program. Artist Catalyst grants provide support to Iowa's artists filmmakers, musicians, and creative writers to undertake activities that advance their artistic practices and elevate the creative field in Iowa. Grant funds may be used to advance an artist's professional capacity, enhance their artistic practice, or expand their audience or market for their work. The pro project activity must have a clear beginning and end date within the eligible funding period. And please note, the program does not support regular ongoing activities related to your artistic practice. The proposal must identify a stretch goal or a unique endeavor that you intend to accomplish with the grant funds. Types of eligible activities related to a specific goal for your practice might include acquire, acquiring business services. So things like contract preparation, business incorporation or accounting systems adapting performances or services to new platforms, such as live streaming or providing virtual classes, attending professional development opportunities to elevate your skills like conferences or workshops, professionally documenting your work, um, such as getting professional photography, video, or audio recording of your artwork, expanding your capacity for creative work. So perhaps um, renting a special type of equipment or gaining studio space to, to rehearse um, or even purchasing new materials to make new work. Learning newer advanced techniques in an art form, so things like taking classes or um, participating in an apprenticeship program. Securing presentation opportunities. So this is finding new spaces to expand your audience for your work. So things like um, exhibitions, publications, or film festivals. Or upgrading marketing and promotion, promotional material of your work. So developing new branding, a website design, or adding e-commerce to a website. Grant funds may not be used to support routine ongoing activities or expenses. So applicants must demonstrate how the funding will enable them to achieve a particular goal related to their artistic career or practice. And eligible activities also include the acquisition or purchase of artwork, including public art, capital projects, collection maintenance or restoration, construction or renovation of a property, fundraiser or benefit costs, 
lobbying activities, ongoing projects or programming, projects submitted by an individual that is actually initiated um, or managed by an entity or organization, projects that result in an applicant's course credit degree or certification, projects that happen before or after the funding period, and um, projects that have already received a grant from the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs or religious activities. The Iowa Arts Council's programs function on the state fiscal year, which again is July 1st to June 30th. The eligible funding period for this grant depends on the time that you apply, so the application deadline. And by funding period, we mean that all fiscal and project activity has to occur within the eligible time period. So the project must be completed, the grant funds spent, and the required match met within that time frame. Applications to the Artist Catalyst Grant are accepted on a quarterly basis, and the funding period begins one month after the application deadline and ends at the end of the fiscal year. So depending on when you apply, you'll have one year, 10 months, seven months, or four months to complete your project. A few items to note about deadlines. Individuals may only receive one grant per year, regardless of grant program. So if you're funded through this program, that's the only grant you will receive from the Iowa Arts Council this year. You may only submit one application at any given deadline, and projects may only receive one grant from the Iowa Arts Council, regardless of phase. So make sure you're applying at the appropriate time in the life cycle of your project. Applicants may not submit more than two unfunded applications for the same project, regardless of fiscal year. So if your application is not selected for funding twice, you may not submit another application for that particular project. And that goes across any of our grant programs. Grant applicants may request between $500 and $2,500 to support one-time expenses that are essential to the completion of the proposed project. The grant request must be dedicated to one-time direct project expenses that are legitimate parts of the proposed project and that are incurred and expended within the funding period. Expenses identified in the grant request should be based on competitive current market pricing and applicants that include ineligible expenses in the grant request will be considered ineligible. Types of eligible expenses include artist fees, um, so paying yourself or another artist for time creating, planning, or performing, in-state travel, so things like mile accommodation or per diem. Equipment purchases under a total of $5,000 per unit. Education fees, so course instructor fees, um, class fees, and this excludes any fees where academic credit is earned, so you can't support um, college tuition or things like that with this grant. Materials. Um, marketing expenses, professional services. So if you're engaging a professional to help you with your project, like a printer, graphic designer, accountant, lawyer, crew, talent, or another collaborating artist. Rentals, so things like rental of stages, studio space, um, lighting, sound, scissor lifts if you're making a mural. Um, do note that all rentals have to be specifically dedicated to the project and a unique expense, not just like your ongoing studio rent. And finally, submission fees. So things like fees uh, to submit to film festivals, exhibitions, or publications. The grant program does have a match requirement in the budget. Applicants must demonstrate a 50% cash match to the grant request from the Iowa Arts Council. So in other words, if you request $1,000 in grant funds, you are responsible for demonstrating that you or another funding source are contributing $500 to the project to cover other project expenses for a minimum total project budget of $1,500. All cash match must be a legitimate part of the proposed project and dedicated to one-time project expenses. The cash does not need to be secured at the time of application, but it does need to be secured at the end of the funding period. 
funding from the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, the state of Iowa or federal government may not be used to meet that match requirement. And you will be expected to demonstrate where you anticipate that match coming from at the time of application. I would like to point out that there are a number of ineligible types of budget expenses. These costs cannot be included in the grant request and they include, again, the acquisition or purchase of artwork, activity that results in course credit degree or certification, budget shortfalls, capital expenditures, um, or equipment that exceeds $5,000 per unit, collection maintenance or restoration, deficit or debt reduction, including loan, line of credit, or mortgage payments, donations or contributions to other organizations, expenses incurred before or after the funding period, food, beverage, or alcohol, foreign travel, fundraising or benefit costs, um, do you know home studio, or home office costs and related expenses are not eligible. So this includes utilities or mortgage payments. Um, lobbying activity, um, ongoing or operating expenses like utilities, re rent or lease, office supplies or personnel time that is not specifically dedicated to the grant activity, personnel benefits, prizes and awards, property maintenance, restoration or renovation as well as any unallowable expenses for federal awards as defined in 2 CFR Part 200 Subpart E cost principles. So those are the federal guidelines that um, oversee this grant. And we've summarized most of them in this list, but you are responsible for knowing those yourself as well. So you cannot include any of those types of expenses in the budget. Eligible applicants to the program include professional individual artists, um, which includes visual and performing artists, filmmakers, musicians, or creative writers um, that are current full-time Iowa residents with a permanent address in Iowa. Applicants have to be 21 years of age or older. And do note an application must support a project that's initiated, produced, and managed by an individual artist and not another entity or organization. Applicants who represent an artist collective, artist team, or band must apply as an individual on behalf of the group and clearly state their individual role in the project proposal as the individual or primary applicant who submits the application will be the one who is legally obligated to the terms of the grant agreement. Ineligible applicants to the program include those who have already submitted two unfunded applications for the same project, for-profit corporations or businesses, individuals enrolled in any type of undergraduate or graduate degree granting program at the time of application, um, Iowa Arts Council administered grantees who have already received a grant from the department for the current fiscal year, Iowa Arts Council administered grantees who have already received a grant from the department for any part of the project, and Iowa Arts Council um, grantees who have an outstanding final report or who have been placed on a funding moratorium. So that covers the overall eligibility and goals for the program. Now we'll take a look at the content of the application We'll walk through the online portal after this section, but do want you to walk through the content of the application first. Before we get started, it looks like we had two questions come in. What is the range for the funds of this grant again? Um, it is $500 to $2,500. And will the questions be included in the recording of this webinar? Um, I will read the questions aloud that come in. Um, so yes, they will be part of the recording that you receive afterwards. All right. Um, so before we start looking at the application questions, I would like to remind everyone that the scoring criteria included in the guidelines um, at iowaculture.gov is what the panel will use to review your application. 
you'll notice that the criteria directly correspond to each section of the application. So we encourage you to keep the rubric in hand as you are filling out your application questions. So first we'll take a look at the application sections that are unscored to cover questions that we typically receive. You will see five brief application sections that require information, but that are not scored. Artist contact information will ask for the contact information for the artist who is submitting the application and to whom we should contact with any questions. Um, please make sure the name and email address provided here are correct as all communication will be sent to this individual and you should supply the legal name for the artist in this section. Project information asks for the start and end date of the project and the project title. The start and end date should fall within the eligible funding period. This section also asks whether the project involves placing artwork on a historic property. Um, so this means permanently placing artwork on like a historic building or in a historic um, area. If it does, we have to have the project approved by our sister division, the State Historical Society of Iowa. Um, so that's just a yes, no question. And finally, this section asks for a proposal summary. And while it's not scored, it will be the first experience the panel has with your project. So make sure it's clear and well-written and it should state in one to three sentences what the project is and what the grant funds will be used for. In an effort to ensure that the Iowa Arts Council's programs and services are representative of the diversity of Iowa's arts community, we have begun to collect demographic information for all of our applicants. This allows us to understand who we are reaching so we have a better idea of who we are not. This section is optional and it is confidential. It's not reviewed by the panel. However, it will help us understand whether we are meeting the goal to serve all of Iowa's cultural community. So we do encourage you to complete it. The minority impact statement is a required form from the state of Iowa. It asks what if any impact the project will have on minority communities. Um, and again, this is not reviewed by the panel. And finally, assurances confirms that you have read the program guidelines and to the best of your knowledge have submitted accurate information and a truthful representation in the application. This has to be signed by the authorized official and anytime you see authorized official in the application, that means you as the applicant. So you'll just enter your name there. Then the first scored section of the application is the applicant profile. Um, again, notice as we go through these slides how the rubric aligns with the questions. Applicant prof in applicant profile, you're asked to give the panel a sense of your work by describing your practice and career, including the type of work you make. So tell the panel about the concepts or themes behind your work. What is it about? What disciplines do you work in and what mediums do you use? And how do those forms of work carry out the concepts? then describe notable achievements in your career. These are self-defined, so they could include notable venues where you've presented your work, honors you've received, or skills you have mastered. And finally, tell the panel how the publicly typically has access to your work. So how and where do you perform or exhibit your work to make it publicly available? The panel will be looking to see that you demonstrate an active practice with strong capabilities and that you proactively make your work available to the public and that you have a record of progress in terms of your work and career. Next up is the project description. This is the what, why, and how section of the narrative. Here we want you to describe what the project is and what you will do. You will need to specifically identify the goal that you intend to accomplish and how it will advance your artistic practice or career. This is where you make the case for why this is, project is important. How will the grant funds act as a catalyst for your artistic work? The panel will want to see that you are stretching here and not just doing more of the same. So make sure the goal is specific to you and your practice at this moment. Then you're asked to describe why the good service or opportunity was selected. In other words, here you are defending the quality of what the grant funds will support. So perhaps you're going to work with a photographer to document your work, tell us who the photographer is and why they were selected, what are their qualifications and experience. Or perhaps you'll take classes with a master artist, tell us why you selected that artist and how learning that skill will advance your work. 
Or maybe you will engage an accountant to shore up your financial management. Tell us who you will use and how you selected them. Then you're asked to provide a timeline, including specific dates for the activities related to the project. This is where you'll lay out the plan for the project, including planning time, when you will use the grant funds and any evaluation that will take place. You can itemize the narrative here. After reading it, the, pro the panel should know exactly how and when the project will take place. Next up is the budget. The budget includes two tables or charts where you will break down your project expenses and demonstrate that you meet the 50% cash match requirement. Please ensure that your math is correct and that you are not including ineligible items in the budget forms. This can lead to eligibility issues for your application. In all sections of the budget, we ask that you round to the nearest dollar and do not include dollar signs, decimals, or commas. Grant request expenses is where you will itemize the eligible expenses that will be funded by the grant dollars, including a description of the expense and the dollar amount for each. You can summarize like expenses, but need to provide sufficient detail so that the panel can determine whether the expenses are accurate and appropriate. At the bottom of this chart, we ask you at a final total role that identifies the row that identifies, excuse me, the total grant request. Then match expenses is where you will detail the required 50% cash match and where it will come from, as well as whether you have any in-kind contributions outside of the grant request dedicated to the project. So here you'll include a brief description of each, each expense, the total cash amount, if it's cash match, or the in-kind value, if it's an in-kind donation to the project. You'll identify what the funding source is for that expense, or where the cash or donation will come from, and whether the funding source has been secured. So is that, is that funding already in hand, or is it something that's anticipated that you need to secure by the end of the year? And again, we'll ask that you add a final total role at row at the bottom that identifies the total cash expenses and total value of in-kind contributions. You'll also be asked to provide the estimated total project cost. And this should just be the sum of the grant request, um, the cash match, and the in-kind contributions that you've listed in the above forms. The panel will look to see that the budget is clear, appropriate, and leverages multiple sources of match to demonstrate investment in the project. And finally, we'll ask you to submit three to five work samples. Work samples should demonstrate the quality of the applicant's past work as it relates to the proposed project and the quality of the proposed activity. So here we encourage you to include examples of your own artistic work and examples of the good or service that you intend to engage with the grant funds. Do note that panelists will not be required to view more than one page of a document or more than three minutes of an audio or video file. So you're encouraged to edit your files to that length or direct panelists to a specific section within a work sample if you are unable to edit it. And finally, the last piece of the scoring rubric is case for support. This does not relate to a specific question, but rather to the proposal as a whole. Here, the panel will evaluate the quality of the overall application and whether you made the case for state support of your project. So that covers the content of the application. Now we'll take a look at how to complete the application online in SlideRoom. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Hold on just a moment. So as I mentioned earlier, you will have to submit all application material online via SlideRoom. You'll go to iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com to find the application form. Um, a couple items to keep in mind, Internet Explorer seems to have issues displaying SlideRoom, so we do encourage you to use a different browser. And we also encourage you to write your narrative in another word processor to proof for grammar and spelling errors before you enter it into any of the online forms. So when you get to iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com, this is our landing page. 
you'll see quick links to the funding policies, the glossary of grant terms and definitions, and then our website, should you need to navigate back. You'll scroll down and find the heading for grants. And then under grants, you'll see the FY 2023 Artist Catalyst Grant. Once you click on it, um, again, you'll see direct links to the guidelines, funding policies, and um, to CFR Part 200 for federal funding policies. And then you can preview the full application before you log in. So this will give you a quick preview of all of the application questions. And when you're ready to dig in deeper or start filling out the form, you can click Apply Now. And here, if you don't already have an account for Sliderm, you can create one and just need an email address. If you already have an account, you can just go ahead and log in. Um, once you log in, then again, you can preview the full application or you can go ahead and click begin application. One thing I do like to point out is up in the top right corner, um, you will see your name, however you registered with Sliderm. You will wanna make sure this information is up to date. Um, this is your account information. And so this is how your application will appear to reviewers. So if the name is incorrect, um, that's what re reviewers will see. So do make sure that information is up to date. Um, then you can click continue. And the first thing you'll see is the forms tab. On the left-hand side, this is where you'll enter um, and can click through all of the various application sections. Um, you'll see that anytime you have to upload a file, there's a blue choose file button so you can navigate to your local computer and pull in any of your application files. Open, oh, I'm in Artist Fellowship. Let me back out and get back in the Artist Catalyst Grant. Here we go. So here you can see all the sections for the Catalyst Grant. Um, do notice that for each of the narrative sections on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the character limit, and this does include spaces. Um, so as you type here, it will track your characters for you. Um, I do again encourage you to type these out in a web browser first or in a word processor first and then paste them back in here and do make sure they're not cut off after you paste them. Um, occasionally we have applicants whose narrative does get cut off because they miscalculated their character count. And then in budget, you can see here are the um, budget forms. So you'll type expense descriptions here and then enter the related value here. And you can add rows for as many expenses as you have. And the same goes for match expenses. As you complete these sections, you will see a green check mark um, on the left hand side that indicates that you're done. Um, however, you can go through um, as you're able to complete them in whatever order you'd like. Portfolio is where you will upload your media or work samples. And again, you can click the blue button to navigate to your local computer to pull those files in. Once you pull them in, you will have the option to add a title, a year, and then additional description of each work sample to provide additional context for the panel. And then when you've got each of the sections completed, you will navigate over to the submit tab. And here, instead of um, red exclamation marks, you will see green check marks. You'll also see here a link that says preview the application before submitting. And there you can click on it and review the full application or save it as a PDF to proofread before you submit. And then at any time you can click save and exit and it will save your work and let you pick up where you left off. And if you want any feedback before you submit your application, um, staff is available to review um, drafts of applications or chat with you to ensure that your project is a good fit for the program. Um, if you would like a review of your draft, um, you can either submit it to us just as a Google Doc or a Word Doc as an attachment via email, or you will have to complete the application and then save that preview 
um, and send it to us as a PDF attachment via email. Um, we aren't able to view applications that are in progress in slide room. We also encourage you to attend um, our office hours. Uh, you can see the dates and times for office hours on the slide in front of you. And we'll have office hours the month prior to each of the quarterly application deadlines for the Artist Catalyst Grant. And again, you can drop in at any time within that hour to ask your quick question, or you're welcome to drop in and hang on for the full hour to benefit from questions that others ask. If you navigate to our website at iowaculture.gov, each grant page also has example applications. Um, the Artist Catalyst Grant is new for us this year, so we don't have um, specific example applications for this program, but you can look at other types of applications for other programs just to see the level of detail that folks typically include in their grant narrative. We also have a link to grant terms and definitions on each of our grant page if um, any of the words are unclear to you um, or you like more explanation, you can find regularly used grant terms there. And then again, program staff um, should always be your number one resource. This final slide um, has my email address should you have any questions. And then for anyone who has accessibility needs, Lindsay Keast is our accessibility coordinator on staff and she can be reached via phone or email as well. Um, so with that, um, that wraps up the content that we have for today's webinar. Um, so we'll hang on for just a couple of minutes here um, and see if we have any questions come in through the Q&A. Um, otherwise, you'll, again, you will receive a recording of this webinar probably by the end of day today, and it will also be posted on our website. And you're welcome to reach out at any time afterwards um, up until the deadline with questions. Just do note that as the deadlines approach, um, we have less and less time to respond to multiple inquiries. Um, so the sooner you contact us, um, the more attention your draft or your questions will get. Um, our first question, uh, can this grant be used for something standard like a musician or band show? Um, that would not present a very strong case for support if it's just something you typically do um, and it's not for a new body of work or it's not something particularly unique that your band is doing. These grants aren't looking to offset just regular expenses that you have, but rather um, times when you're doing something particularly unusual or meeting or achieving a specific strategic goal that your band might have. So if the venue is particularly unique or you're incorporating, you know, some sort of new body of work or music style that you're looking to present to a new audience, you could make the case that way. Um, but just supporting any given show in your lineup of performances wouldn't be a very strong case for support. We have another question. Can the matching funds come from personal funds? Yes, absolutely. Um, so, in that match section, you can just list out what those cash expenses are. And then under source, you can say personal funds or personal bank account. That's a completely fine and reasonable source of your matching funds.
Let's see, we've got a couple of questions that have come in now. Um, I'm undecided between the Artist Catalyst Grant and the Art Project Grant. I can't attend the Project Grant webinar tomorrow. Should I still register so I can access the recording at a later date and time? Yes, um, I would encourage you to register for any of the upcoming webinars that you might be interested in, and then you'll receive um, access to the recordings as soon as they're available. We will also post the recordings on the web pages themselves. So even if you're not registered, you can access them that way. And I will say the difference, um, just quickly to point out between the Artist Catalyst Grant and Art Project Grant is one, the available funding. Artist Project Grants are really intended to support larger projects. Um, so those grants fund between $2,500 and $10,000. Um, it has the 50% matching requirement again there. Um, so you'll want to consider whether you can meet that requirement. And then those grants really do require um, a significant amount of more information during the application because we're really looking to see that you have a distinct specific project in place um, for creating and presenting new work that involves collaboration with others and that provides deliberate public engagement and access during the funding period. Um, so that's kind of the difference where Artist Catalyst grants are looking to fund sort of smaller goals that are more specific to your artistic practice and don't require as much planning or um, public engagement. I understand that I can't receive two different grants, but can I apply for two different grants? Uh, no, we only accept one application per deadline. So if you're interested in both the programs, you'd have to pick one. And then if you're not, if you're not funded for the art project grant, that only has one deadline. So you'd have to wait a whole nother year to apply. Otherwise, then you could apply later in the year for an artist catalyst grant if you're not funded at the May deadline. If you are seeking support for new marketing materials or a piece of equipment under $5,000, for example, can they also be used for future events and not just one event? Yes, yep. So you would have to essentially defend why now is the right time for you to get that piece of equipment or upgrade your marketing materials, um, but it's fine if then you're, you're able to use that in subsequent events or after the end of this funding period. Uh, and then how do we reach the office hours Zoom sessions? So on each of the grant web pages, um, there is a link that you can join the Zoom meeting directly from, or there's um, call in information if you prefer to just call into those sessions. So you'll just have to navigate to iowaculture.gov backslash grants, click on the grant tab, and then the program that you're interested in. So in this case, it'd be Artist Catalyst Grants. And then on that landing page for the grant program, you'll see the link to join the Zoom sessions. So while we're waiting to see, I know sometimes it just takes a little while to form your questions and get them typed into the Q&A. Again, just keep in mind that these grants are really intended to help you professionalize your artistic practice. So whether that's engaging someone to help with the business side of what you're doing or developing those skills yourself, that's one route you could take. Um, another goal of this program is to enhance your own artistic skills or practice. So again, in that vein, think about um, taking classes to um, refine the way that you work or learn um, a particular skill set within your discipline. 
And then finally think about ways that you could expand or engage new audiences. So whether that's seeking new venues that you don't typically show your work in um, or expanding your online presence, those are kind of the three different routes that we're encouraging you to look at and ways to make your case for why these grant funds will help you achieve something new related to your artistic practice. You mentioned that securing a particular venue might be a good case for a grant. Can you speak more about that? Yeah, so I think um, most of your questions might indicate that you're a musician. Um, so perhaps you're trying to expand your audience to um, a different region in Iowa, or you're trying to reach a new demographic, um, making the argument for who you're trying to reach and why, and then finding venues that um, already have that type of audience might be a good case for support um, in terms of how you're expanding and working outside of venues that you might normally present your work in. Um, would this grant cover presentations of a book at schools and libraries? Um, it could, yeah. So, I mean, the, the range of expenses that these grants can cover is fairly broad. Um, the key is making the case for why you're doing that and how that's something new or unusual for you or your practice. So in that case, you'd have to identify why you're trying to reach the particular audience that's at schools or libraries and how that's important to your, to your work and in, in the promotion of that particular book. All right, well, it doesn't look like we've got any other questions coming in right now. So just a reminder, feel free to join us on those open office hours. Um, take a look at those example applications that are on our website, and then don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you have as you prepare your applications. Um, we look forward to seeing them and reading about what you're working on. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs>